Welcome back everyone, Mean Poo here, and today I have the newest model of the Acer Nitro 5. Its main features are an Intel 12th generation i5-12500H CPU, an NVIDIA 3050 Ti GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 15.6 inch 144 Hz panel. All this for the retail price of $899 at Best Buy. The machine arrived in two boxes. One was brown, which is not shown, and was much larger. The other is the typical box for the Nitro file machines, as you can see here. Briefly, on the left and right sides, you'll have the specs of the machine with serial numbers. The back side has a warning of explosion, and the bottom has weight limits for the box. The top has a handle, which should help some people carry it from the store. Lastly, you have the front of the box with the Nitro 5 logo and some lighting art over over some kind of circuit board. Like most machines, a tamper sticker must be cut to be able to open the box. Opening the flap, the first thing we have is the foam packing and a medium sized black box. The contents are a hard drive upgrade cable. I don't know how many times I've heard that people did not get one. From my experience, here are the reasons for not having one. You either threw it away, you misplaced it, you bought it used and the previous owner threw it away, or Acer forgot to pack it. Take your pick. This is the wall adapter cable, the AC power adapter, model PA-1181-16, the adapter is 180 watts. Notice the plug-in is red, which is a different color from the other adapters in the series. A keyring ornament which is pretty much what it is, a setup guide in four languages, a support card in a few languages, a declaration of conformity card stating that the radio frequency inside the machine are safe and is in line with the standards that are set by the external organization, basically saying that it complies with the FCC rules. The brown envelope contains your limited warranty, you get one year, don't spill, drop, or physically harm the machine, or it's not covered. Pretty much common sense. Weird fan noises, smells, or a non-functioning computer is covered. If the machine does not work within a few days, just return it and save yourself the hassle. No sense to trying to ship it back to Acer, even though they want you to do that. Just take it back to the store. Some Planet 9 stickers. If you're into eSports, then this may be something that you're interested in. Here we have the traveler's warranty. This will allow you to get warranty service while traveling outside of the original country of purchase. It's in 10 languages and has a listing for important information that you may want to write down such as owner's name, address, date of purchase, model, dealer, etc. Lastly, we have the machine itself. It comes packed like previous models with very strong and sturdy foam. Removing the fabric, we are presented with the new version of the Nitro 5. It's a pretty little beast, but I probably should hold the name until I'm done. With the lid closed, it's very smooth and uniform without any sharp edges. The curves toward the front remind me of the new M1 MacBooks. There are no designs on the machine except for the embossed Acer logo that becomes right side up once the lid is open and the printed nitro in red on the rear. Moving on around, I notice a more updated look while still being slightly aggressive because of the red ascents. We have a few ports that were on the sides now living on the rear. Nice improvements that should have come sooner. The nitro five can be opened with one finger while not rocking or sliding. Inside there is a cloth for protection from dust and possibly scratches. Here I am grabbing the sides and bending them. It's pretty typical for an all plastic build machine. To my surprise, the machine shipped with the zoned RGB. This was a feature introduced over a year ago and was only available in different regions. I like the black and white caps since it's easier on the eye than red. The Nitro 5 has a full keyboard and numpad to the right side. The Nitro Sense button and the power button are both located in the same area. Shortcut keys such as sleep, 
increasing keyboard backlight, touchpad disabling are all located along the top and must be pushed in conjunction with the function key. Along the top, we now have cutouts for air intake. This is one of the new designs for the Nitro 5. It's definitely needed and I can't wait to see if it helps. Moving around the area, everything is pretty much flat, no weird angles or slopes. On the left side of the machine, we have all the usual advertising of what's inside. The Intel Core i5 is in blue and the Nvidia GeForce RTX is in green and white, their typical colors. On the right side palm rest, we have other features, M.2 support, Nitro Sense, Killer Double Shot Pro, Quad Exhaust, Thunderbolt 4, and HDMI out. I'd say two out of the six are something to be excited about. Starting on the left side, we have a Kissington lock slot, used to keep your machine safe by connecting it to a Kissington security lock. Ventilation exhaust vent, which expels heat from the machine. A killer E2600 gigabit ethernet controller. It connects to an ethernet 10 100 1000 base network. A USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. Support speeds up to five gigabits per second. A headset speaker jack. Connects powered speakers or a headset with a microphone. The left side speaker. This is for sound. I have no info for how many watts, but if I had to guess, I would say probably around two. Along the front, there is nothing but a smooth, clean finish with curves on both ends. Moving along the right side, we have the right speaker, and this is for sound, just like the left one. Here we have the battery indicator. It provides a quick status of the battery. It's amber when it's charging and turns blue when finished. Two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports support speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. Only this port supports power off charging. It allows your computer to continue to provide power to devices when the machine is off. Last on this side is another ventilation exhaust vent, which is used to help cool the machine. Along the back, we have the other side of the right side exhaust. I'm glad they removed a lot of the red from this machine. Although it is a gaming laptop, it looks a little less gamerish and up to date. On over, we have a warning sticker stating that it's hot back here. DC in jack, plug the AC adapter into this to provide power. Next, we have a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port. Oh yeah. Supports up to 40 gigabits per second of bi-directional bandwidth and can drive up to two 4K displays or one 8K. An HDMI 2.1 port. This common port allows you to connect a TV, external display, or another HDMI in enabled device. You will get audio output to go along with the video. Moving on, we have another warning label and finishing up the rear of the left ventilation exhaust port. Using the protective cost, I'm going to lay the Nitro 5 upside down. On the back, we have 11 screws, four large rubber feet, and a large intake area. There is a caution sticker located on the top middle. Model number and serial number is located on the black sticker on the bottom middle. Looking from this side, you get a good view of the speaker grill and how they are angled to deliver sound in a certain direction. Based on other Nitro 5s, I don't think it's going to make a bit of a difference. You'll get better sound through your headphones or external amplified speakers. Continuing on, let's get this panel off. I'll be using a PH0 bit to remove the screws. There are 11 total, which are the same sizes and lengths. This is always tricky, but now I'm going to have to try to wrestle with removing the bottom panel. Working on the front right is a good start.
Once you get some tabs loose, just work your way around. I was having a little trouble on this area and started to work from the back and not paying attention I accidentally removed the LCD hinge cover. It's not a bad thing, but it's not what we wanted. Might as well take a look since it's removed. I can't tell, but these cables could be for the panel itself and the camera and microphone at the top. Once all the tabs are loose, the bottom should come off rather easily. There are no wires connected, so you should be okay if you're the reckless type. With the bottom removed, I see no difference in the cooling system from the previous version. The one obvious change is the CPU and GPU have switched sides. I'm basing this just on the shape of the heat sinks. Anyway, let's go ahead and remove the power cable. Next, let's remove the shield to expose the RAM modules. Depressing both sides will cause the module to be released. Here is one of the Acer favorite brands, SK Hynix. Here is a close up. And the back. Reinstalling is rather easy. Line up the slot with the notch and gently push down. There is one long heat pipe shared between both processors. The last two are divided between having one each. I wonder why one pipe is smaller than the other. Both fans are made of some type of plastic resin, so there is no metal here at all. Here are the internal parts of this machine. Right side fan, DC in jack, CPU heatsink, Intel i5-12500H CPU, having eight efficient, four performance cores, and 16 threads. Having a max boost of 4.5 GHz, this is a 45 watt processor with max turbo power of 95 watts, 8 GB of DDR4 memory, the brand is XK Hynix running at 1600 MHz, this is module 1 of 2, Thunderbolt 4, HDMI, GPU heatsink, an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti, has 2,560 CUDA cores, max power of 95 watts, 
boost clock of 1485 MHz, a memory bandwidth of 192.03 gigabits per second, and has a total of 4096 megabytes of GDDR6 RAM, or just say four gigabytes of RAM. The Kensington lock, left side fan, the killer E2600 gigabit ethernet controller, USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, headset speaker jack, left side speaker, lithium ion battery model AP18E8M. This is a 57.48 watt hour battery rated at 55.03 watt hours. M.2 slot, two of two. Eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, module two of two. USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, right side speaker. The Intel Killer Wi-Fi 6 AX1650i wireless network adapter having a maximum data transfer rate of 2400 megabits per second. It's also dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, A, B, G, N, A, C, A, X compatible, and one other feature is that it has Bluetooth 5.2. M.2 slot, one of two. This has a size 2280 NVMe drive already installed, which is 512 gigabytes by Micron. The model is MTFDKBA512TFH, a 2.5 inch expansion bay for a hard drive or SSD. This is one of the good things about Acer. They have all storage expansions covered at the expense of battery, and I'm not being sarcastic either. Lastly, the CMOS battery. This is used for keeping the BIOS settings and maintains the time, date, drives and other configuration settings when the machine is shut down. Let's put the metal shield back on along with the one screw to secure it. Plugging the power cable back in was way more work than normal. Uh, just over a minute of fiddling around with the cable until completion. Here is the display hinge we took off earlier. It's all plastic with three screw posts on the bottom. This is what we are screwing into when the bottom panel is closed or removed. The bottom panel is all plastic. Nothing is metal besides the NVMe heatsink shields and the mesh grill. There is some spongy material for the 2.5 inch drive bay and I believe it could be used for vibration control. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments section. This is also on the side of the battery. The mesh grill is located above the CPU, GPU only, and it's not implemented over the fans. This will help not to restrict airflow, but on the other hand, it will allow larger particles of dust, paper, etc. to get inside your machine. I'm not going to be too harsh about this as I bet this is from many complaints of hot CPUs and the machine not being able to cool itself properly. To install the lid, just lay it flat on the laptop and press around the sides. You should hear clicking sounds as you do this. When finished, turn it over so we can install the display hinge cover. The notches will fit in the grooves of the panel and will also make a clicking sound when pressed together. Go around all sides of the machine to make sure everything is together. Install the 11 screws back into the machine.
I know it's redundant, but sometimes you could have a wire hanging out and you're probably wondering where it came from. The Acer Nitro 5 weighs 5.69 pounds or 258.94 grams. On first boot, the Nitro 5 will not turn on until you plug in the AC adapter jack. So click as much as you want. Insert the adapter in the back as shown. Listen and feel the click for confirmation that it's in. Now you can go back and hit the power button. Pushing the keypad area shows a bit of flex. I'm pushing pretty hard and it feels more sturdy than the previous versions that I have. You might not get much out of this, but it will show you if the keys are too fragile and possibly popping out. I think it will hold up if a toddler got a hold of it and started slamming its fist into the keys. And yes, it does happen. Here's one for you. Let's try adding a 10 pound plate on it. Better yet, let's try 15 pounds. Well, seems pretty sturdy to me. Maybe a worthless test, but I've always wanted to do it. Moving on, I'm removing the Norton antivirus. Now that the machine is on, let's have a look at the webcam and microphone. They are located on the panel at the top. Going from left to right, there is the left microphone and LED status light, the camera, and the right side microphone. All right, guys, this is the Acer Nitro 5 web camera. It's pretty much the same as it's been on every other Nitro 5. It has a max resolution of 1280 by 720. And if you wanted to, you could drop this down, if you wanted to, to 640 by 480 or 640 by 360. That's probably something that you might not want to use. You don't want to be taking photos or anything like that. So it's probably best to use it in like a, a Zoom call or something like that. But this camera is the same as the previous ones. You can also take pictures. And actually, there's no flash on it so make sure you have proper lighting either go outside or just stand around where a bunch of lights are to just get the best visual uh, but other than that it's basically a 720 camera and it's nothing special just get your an external logitech um, um, what is it a brio or whatever it is the 4ks get one of those if you want to do something like that if you want to live stream or anything so yeah 720 basic nothing much the display on the Nitro 5 is an IPS panel with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. The max refresh rate is 144 Hz, which is what they tell you. I know, it's not a lot of info, so I took it up on myself, since I'm reviewing this thing, to get more details. And this is what I found. After reading, it still doesn't look too bad when in person, but compared to everything else, you know where I'm going. Here is a brightness test starting at 0 to 100%. Here is the same test a little further back. The bezel is thinner on all sides except the bottom. It's still huge and really stands out as wasted space. As I said before, can't complain on a budget laptop. This may be as good as it gets.
Here are some different angles of the display. Next up we have some sound tests. Controlling the keyboard color is pretty easy. Just open Nitro Sense and click the keyboard icon on the top right menu. Dragging the brightness button from left to right will increase the brightness. The action will not register until the mouse button is let go. You can disable each of the four zones by toggling the corresponding button in the zone. Clicking the small square allows you to pick a color of your choice. Switching to dynamic, the keyboard starts the breathing effect. This can be sped up or slowed down. Switching to wave will allow you to pick a direction of left or right. The zoom effect gives the illusion of the keyboard colors zooming in. It's not a good effect because it's zoned. If it was a per key RGB, it would be much smoother and look a whole lot better. The last two effects are shifting, which can change direction and neon, which can't. The squares at the bottom middle are used to hold recent used colors. NitroSense is a useful piece of software for the Nitro 5. It offers three fan control methods. Auto, which lets the machine control the fan speed based on temperature. Max, which turns the fans on full blast. And Custom. This will allow you to set the fan speed manually. You can even have one fan on auto 
while the other is a custom speed that you set. Moving the slider to the left decreases and to the right increases speed. Right below Nitro Sense gives you three power modes to work in. Choosing quiet will allow the fans to actually turn off with temperature permitting. It uses the least power, especially while on battery. Choosing default allows the machine to throttle the CPU when needed and uses more power than quiet. Picking the performance mode uses the most power and will allow your machine to run as fast as it can even while nothing is going on. In the monitoring area, you can keep an eye on the temps or look at previous temperatures with an attached time. Just hover your mouse over the area to get the information. The next item on the menu is the Acer True Harmony button. This allows you to listen to your music or movies with pretty much a different EQ setting. Don't try this with the built-in speakers, you will probably not be able to tell the difference. Headphones is definitely recommended. Clicking the cog on the menu will bring up the advanced settings. Here you can toggle the sticky keys on or off. Instead of holding down a button, you can tap it and it will stay down until you press another key. Disabling the Windows key, which does exactly as it says. Temperature units will switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. And lastly, the backlight off after 30 seconds will keep them on if disabled. The mouse icon will take you to Planet 9, which is a place where you can buy point. Well, no, it's, it's a place where you can compete in online esports games. It's pretty big, so if you are into this, then like I said before with the stickers, this might be for you. Here you can look up stats, choose certain games, and check out the latest tournaments. Next up, we have some benchmarks with various software and technical information.
Imagine a future in which humans have become so powerful that they can individually control thousands of semi-sentient machines spread across an entire world. Now imagine that they have gained the ability to manipulate individual particles across time and space to seed worlds with these machines. What do you think would happen if you guessed that an endless war would rage across the stars? You would be right. I know a secret. It's a secret I haven't told any of my children. We aren't alone. And what's out there terrifies me. Our only hope for survival is to annihilate the post-humans. You shall be our sword and shield. Our war shall begin with an Orion Spur. The post-human who murdered my daughter Athena has found his way here. They call him the Neoph now. He must be stopped. I need time to build a series of quantum archives in order to upload us both to our new home. Doing so will consume all my time and resources. 
I need you to protect me from the post-human assassin, Neof. I have invented a new technology they do not yet possess. The ability to upgrade defenses to stronger ones. I am trying. Federal Bureau of Control. All these years, I've been looking for them, and they were hiding in plain sight. Oh? Hey, excuse me. There you are. You are here about the job. Janitor's assistant. You need to go to the interview. Go that way to... Did I lose you there for a moment? You know what's on my mind. My baby brother, Dylan. Seventeen years since the men of this bureau took him. <sighs>
Oh, also, I spotted the Combine moving supplies into the quarantine zone. That place has been deserted for years. Hmm. That is all. Well, well, we'll look into it when we get back. What is this? Meet back at the safe house, baby. We'll be there soon. It looks like... What is it, Russell? Would you... Looks like we're taking the stairs. Here we go, breaker boxes. back on. dangerous do we think this stuff really is well it is spores from another dimension so probably yeah extremely but a rare opportunity to examine alien flora up close oh careful of those pustule things they're looking a bit ticked off the closer you get UK Sports welcomes you to the following. Phoenix, Arizona. The day on 2K Sports. A happy Sunday evening to you and yours. This is Kevin Harlan along with Clark. Let's check out our starters for the Los Angeles Lakers. And they have Uncas out there with Mark Gasol. And for Phoenix, up it forward, they'll have Bridges and Crowder. The star backcourt of Paul and Booker are out there. And it's eight in, the, in at the five. One fifty-eight left here in the first Some quarter. Foul. Yeah, that one put them over eight the limit, foul. and it's so early That's that if they're not careful, this could turn into a parade foul. at the free throw line. And this, the, the second the season of Anthony Davis's five year, hundred ninety million point shooter, but run by him, not into him. An accurate shooter from all areas of the floor early in his career, but. Now he's a legit number one option for an offense. Here's Westbrook, and he can't bank that one in. From deep. Here's Westbrook. 
Here's Payne. Phoenix, no good that time either. Lakers. Times in the past, veteran teammates didn't appreciate his constant input. Credit these younger guys, though, for soaking it in. Shamit is out there with Cameron Payne. And it's Charge in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. And it's good, two point. Andre Eaton's checked in for Cameron Johnson. Jay Crowder comes in for Bridges. And pulls the defensive. Offensive rebound. Another shot. Here's Eaton. And he makes good on the way. And using that 7 5 wingspan, putting it back off the miss. One of Aiden's specialties. Pass to LeBron. Shot from the wing. That's good. And so Westbrook comes up with LeBron the assist. James. LeBron's got four this quarter. A great assist. Nice work from Russell Westbrook. James against Crowder. There's Shamit. Trains it from beyond the arc. Shamit's got six. And, and I like the fact that he really was unfazed by that. No respect. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the way it goes.
emoción para mi gente Con una pasión Con una pasión tan fuerte Ay, 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 ay Ahora sigo cantando y sigo gozando Yo sigo cantando y sigo gozando
Reloaded. Allied cluster strike. Reloaded. Inbound. Hostile down. Enemy precision airstrike. Take cover. Take it down. Go. 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 Well, what did I think about the machine? Starting with the build quality, it felt much stronger versus the other iterations. The display panel is thinner, but they need to work on the bottom part too. This could be a challenge as there are screws and support in this area. Where the older Nitro 5 looks geared towards gamers, this one looks like it has grown up. It has smooth corners in the front, all black, and it has just a pinch of the gamer aesthetic if you view from the rear. The display is not the best and gets the job done for what's needed. If you have other Nitro 5s in your arsenal, you may not even notice. The zone RGB and higher refresh rate along with the extra 8GB of RAM would cost extra in the past. Now you get all those features for the same low price as the previous versions. This is awesome! And one of the biggest positives for me is of the terrible red keys I, I hope they do away with those I, I really can't stand them and i know some other people don't like them either playing games on the nitro 5 was very enjoyable the temperatures were low for the 3050 ti and the 12 500 h 
There was no games where the tip reached 90, but there was one that came close, which was Call of Duty. This was a problem for the older versions where you would have to undervote. At this time, there is no need for it. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if you can use throttle stop. I guess I will have to test this soon, just, you know, just to see if it will work. The added feature in which the fan will turn off with temperature permitting is a nice addition to make it quieter. The increase in fan speed is also a nice touch, which gets over 7,000 RPM according to NitroSense. I believe Acer's R&D were working overtime when they came up with something that actually helped, allowing air to be pulled in from the top of the machine. Now you would get cooler air going to the heat sinks in conjunction to the supply that comes from under it. I believe this is also helping with the lower temperatures that we see now. Only time will tell how long it will last. My previous version started off just like this and after a month or so the temperatures started to soar and I had to repaste. Anyway, I've been really hard on Acer in the past and some of their cooling designs as well as their build configurations have been questionable. The machine right here, this machine right here, makes it seem like they were actually listening or somebody was. It plays everything you probably have in your library, has more than enough RAM, has the zone keyboard that most people like to have, a decent webcam and crappy speakers. In my opinion, it's worth the money. If you are getting into the entry level of laptop gaming, it's one of the best budget machines out there and you can't really beat the price. Well, that's all I have for now. If you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, that's right. One more thing. It's a beast. A small beast, but it's a beast. <laughs>